This is Dr. David Kenny, Chief Medical Officer of Atlantic Medical Imaging. Today, I would like to review coronary CTA. Coronary CTA is one of the least invasive CAT scan examinations currently available for assessing coronary artery disease. It's one of the most helpful means in which physicians can determine the degree of coronary artery disease or plaque burden that patients have. This technology is advanced and only available in a handful of facilities throughout the country. Atlantic Medical Imaging has a high level of expertise in interpreting these studies. So what we have here today is an example of one of these exams. This is a standard CAT scan where the patient is in the machine and hooked up to an EKG uh, device that is connected to a computer. And during a certain point um, at which your heart beats, the CTA turns on and is able to obtain detailed images of your coronary arteries without motion artifact. And the computer and radiologist reconstruct these images and interpret the findings and report them back to the patient's physician or cardiologist. So what we see here is what we call an axial image. Imagine the patient lying on a table with their head away from you and their feet towards your face. And as we scroll, you can look through the patient as if you were slicing through their chest to see different parts of the heart. So here we have the heart. This bright appearance is the result of intravenous contrast that is given to the patient through an IV. This enables us to highlight the coronary arteries. What we see here is the ascending aorta, and here is the left main coronary artery. This is the left anterior descending coronary, coronary artery, which supplies the anterior wall of the heart. If we trace that back, we can now see the left circumflex coronary artery and its diagonal branches, which supply the uh, inferior lateral part of the heart. And on this side, we have the right coronary artery coming from the right coronary cusp of the aorta. And this supplies the right side of the heart and base of the heart in this circumstance. These images seem quite small, so what we do is we reconstruct these images on a separate elaborate computer system that enables us to generate images like this, which are twisted in three dimensions. And we're able to see here in this case, the left anterior descending coronary artery, one of the main coronary arteries of the heart, in exquisite detail. And you can see here, there is a small amount of plaque that this patient has, but it doesn't cause a significant degree of narrowing or stenosis. The vessel is open and otherwise okay. This would not cause the patient to have any symptoms of angina or chest pain with exertion. We'll take a look at another coronary artery here in the same patient. This is the right coronary artery that we discussed earlier. And here we can see extensive soft and calcified plaque. What happens is your body forms atheromatous plaque, which insinuates within the wall of the coronary artery and builds up over time and causes luminal narrowing. In many cases, as that plaque matures or stays within the wall or coronary artery, calcium forms. So these areas of calcium are areas where this plaque has been for quite some time. This calcium can make it very difficult to see the lumen of the coronary artery, but in this case, it does not. And we can see that this vessel, despite having a good amount of plaque, is not narrowed and will not cause the patient any symptoms. This is particularly useful for physicians because a standard stress test or even a coronary angiogram, which is quite an invasive exam to look at the coronary arteries, would never be able to tell a cardiologist or physician that a patient has this degree of coronary artery plaque. This would enable the physician to modify a preventative treatment strategy. This patient, if appropriate, would be prescribed statin drugs or lipid or cholesterol lowering medication in addition to urging the patient to uh, continue with positive lifestyle changes exercise and eating healthy which can result in these plaques regressing or improving over time which we have seen time and time again the last thing that the radiologist does after evaluating each one of these vessels 
radiologist will then evaluate the heart itself to make sure that the left ventricle, left atrium, and right-sided heart chambers are all normal and that there is no clot or thrombus sitting within, that there is no mass or structural abnormality. The radiologist will then look at the mediastinal space, which is this space between the aorta, pulmonary arteries, trachea, and bronchi. These are the airways right here. And what I'm going to do is change the window so that you can see this is how we look at the lungs. And these are the bronchi that extend out into the left lung and right lung. And radiologists are looking at the lung to determine whether there is pneumonia or interstitial lung disease or scarring from smoking. And then that radiologist is evaluating to look for a mass or nodule that may require additional imaging or follow up. Nodules are very common. We see them in many patients, between 30 and 40% of patients in certain populations. It does not mean that a patient has cancer necessarily. Most times it's from infection or a previous infection. Radiologists will then look at the bones and we can see the bones in nice detail here. And we make sure that everything is normal in appearance without a fracture or evidence of metastatic disease that has gone undetected. Once each of the organ systems are reviewed by that particular radiologist, a report is generated in our dictation system and sent out to the referring physician. I hope you enjoyed reviewing coronary CTA with me today, and please reach out to us if you have any other questions or concerns. We'd be happy to answer them.